people of the living God, welcome to our service today. So I have a testimony that I'd like to share before we get into the service. A few weeks back, I was, uh, I went to the doctor thinking it's just flu. But when I got there, he said, you need to test for COVID. I was like, oh, okay. When I tested, my test came back positive. And one Sunday I got so sick, I couldn't breathe. And I called one of the elders here at church, uh, Matele Zane, and she said to me, go to the hospital. I said, no. She said, okay, let's pray. And the reason why I'm sharing my testimony that <laughs> because after she prayed for me, I felt much better. And when she prayed, she called upon the name of Jesus. And I don't know who is going through what this morning or in your life. I mean, our country at the moment is going through a state. And I believe that if we call upon the name of Jesus, if we call upon the name of names, the name that everything when they hear it bows down, even demons themselves bow down when they hear the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I was healed. There are situations in our life that will not change until we call upon the name of Jesus, until we give it to God. There's things that will not respond until we use this name. And I'll just like to ask you wherever you are to just raise your hands and, and open your mouth and let's call upon this name. Call upon this name in your situation right now for the situation that our country is facing. Let us call upon the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his name. We know, Lord, that when we call upon the name of Jesus, everything is going to bow. It doesn't matter how difficult the situation is, but when we call upon the name of Jesus, things a turn to turn around things will change things will look better because we're not just calling any name but we're calling the name of the lord we're calling the name of jesus we're calling the name of the great mighty god we're calling the name of god we're calling the name that when demons hear they tremble we're not just calling any name but we're calling the name of jesus and this morning father we're saying jesus jesus in our situations jesus in our problems jesus in our health we know that by his stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus father we thank you and we give you glory that we call upon the great name this morning and we say Jesus 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 in every situation we give you glory Lord and we we exalt you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the book of Psalm 18 um, I will start from verse 2 it says the Lord is my protector he is my strong fortress my God is my protection and with him I am safe. He protects me like a shield, he defends me and he keeps me safe. I call to the Lord and he saves me from my enemies. Praise the Lord. The danger or death was all around me. The waves of destruction rolled over me. The danger of death was around me and the grave set its trap for me. In my trouble, <laughs> I called the Lord. I called to my God for help. In his temple, he heard my voice. He listened to my cry for help. And saints, I want you to take this word this morning, say, call upon the name of Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus. And then as we praise and as we worship him, <laughs> call upon the name of Jesus and you will be saved and your situation will change and things will respond. Let us praise the Lord. So in the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 25, the Bible says, Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives and in the end, he will stand upon the earth. Now we are going to celebrate that God has redeemed us and we're going back to the place we used to be because He lives.
Announcements for today are as follows. If you are joining us for the very first time or if you are viewing for the very first time, welcome to Doxadeo 20 Central. We hope you are going to feel at home. We love you so much and thank you for taking your time to join us and listen to the Word of God with us. And if you are celebrating your birthday from Monday till today, a happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. May the blessing of the Lord be abundant in your life. May He open doors. May you prosper. May you be wealthy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if there was a couple that is celebrating their anniversary, happy anniversary to you. May you continue to show the world that godly marriage so that they can also be inspired and get married. For marriage is a good thing. And every Thursday at 6 in the evening, we are here on Facebook for our prayer service. We have been hearing such great testimonies and people have been sharing their prayer requests so that we can pray together. So please do join Join us Thursday at 6 in the evening. Now over to the word of God that will be shared by Pastor Kenneth Mowale. Let us all at home give him a round of applause and say Pastor as he come and share the word of God. Hello Twane Central and everybody that is watching us today on this uh, premiered uh, service on our Facebook page and uh, on our YouTube channel as well. So please don't forget to tell your friends to like our page and also to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Now we have been doing a series called Money Talks and uh, I explained when we started this series that uh, when we say money talks, we are not trying to be arrogant to say that when you have money, money makes a statement. While that may be true at, a lev at some levels, but that's not the direction that we want to take. When we say money talks, we are talking about 
different money discussions so you if you want for example you can say uh, money discussions you know we are having money discussions and so far we've had four talks you know we looked at uh, giving you know we looked at money as a reward and uh, today we are going to look at money and uh, your relationship with money now to have money you know you need definitely to have a good relationship with money you know for you to um, to have money you need a good relationship with money you know money like most things it it, it for some reason you know it repels you know from the people that either disrespect it or that have all these uh, wrong ideas about it so you know your relationship with money is crucial for you to start having healthy sums of money so today we are looking at uh, your relationship with money you know um, for you to have that good relationship definitely you know you need uh, to understand a few things now for you to have money and for you to have a very good relationship with money what you need first is you need a very healthy desire to have money you know um, I know that uh, uh, a lot of people you know think that having a healthy desire to have money is sinful actually God does not discourage us from having a good desire for money what he discourages us is to to be obsessed to be obsessed with money you know when you are obsessed with money money can create so many evils in your heart but if you have a healthy genuine desire to earn good money for all those reasons that we have been discussing in our previous discussions which i can uh, also encourage you if you haven't had uh, uh, a context you know to what we are discussing because you missed a few episodes of our you know money talks go back to the fall and uh, find us where we are today when we are doing the fifth now when you look at the uh, the book of uh, psalm chapter 37 verse 4 it says delight in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart you know in philippians chapter 4 6 and 7 the bible says that in everything don't be anxious you know but uh, bring your prayers to god and then it says make you know uh, these things presentable or present these things to the Lord so in other words when you present something to the Lord you are bringing your desires and I would encourage you that some of those desires should be your desire to earn good sums of money you know myself and my wife we have uh, this uh, board where we have written a few things we are presenting them to the Lord and one of the things that we have put there is how much money we would want to earn every single month you know we are not earning uh, probably that kind of money right now but we know that these is this is the money that we would want to earn for us to live the way that we would want to live I, am i thankful about how much money i am earning right now you bet i am you know but i want to also i have this healthy desire to earn more and to do more with the money now a lot of people 
have a problem with the, the scripture which says that the love of money, it's in, in the book of uh, 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 Timothy, it says the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, they, they, they always omit the word love of money. It's, it's, it's that kind of love, the obsession, you know, with money. You know, it is the love of money that God warns us about, you know. And actually in the Bible, there are three types of love. You know, brotherly love, love between a spouse. There is agape love. Now when God said, don't love money, which one did he use? I want to believe that he used the one that is talking about being obsessed, being infatuated, that you can kill, you can do all kinds of funny things to just get that money. You know, that is what God is warning us about. There is nothing wrong with you having a healthy desire to have money. Now, that is the first thing. If you're going to have a good relationship with money, your desire for it, must be healthy. That's the first thing you have to do. The second thing is that you need to understand money. A lot of people don't understand money. Actually, you may have money in your pocket. I, I think I have, uh, I have uh, some money in my pocket right now. I think I have, uh, uh, this is 200 rand. And uh, a lot of people, when they see this 200 rand, they think this is money. You know, I will, I will prove to you that this 200 rand is actually a piece of paper. It is not money. Actually, if, if, if I tear it and I burn this, that's, that's all. But you know, the money that is inside this or that is represented by this is what I want us to talk about today. Now, you need to understand money. You know, two things that you need to know about money. The first one is that money is amoral. In other words, money doesn't have morality in itself. Money is neither good nor bad. Like water, like fire, like uh, stones, like anything, money will do whatever its possessor has in their heart you know money takes the color of the heart of its possessor so you will discover that uh, if you are a good man money is going to help you facilitate the goodness of your heart you know one of my friends you know uh, we were discussing some things concerning money and concerning life you know he said something to me that up to today, you know, I really cherish. He said to me, he says, you see, Ken, money helps you to help people understand your heart. Because he said that if you love someone, money has the ability to help that somebody see and experience your heart. You know, money has the power to help people experience your heart. You know, uh, in Doxa Deo, we usually say is that we need to move, you know, from uh, concern to compassion. When you have concern, you can feel sorry about a guy who doesn't have food. But when you have compassion, you are able to give them bread. So money helps you to move from concern to compassion. Money helps people to experience what is in your heart. If you have evil in your heart, people will experience the evil that is in your heart because money will give it expression. You know, if you have good stuff in your heart, people will experience the goodness that is in your heart. Why? Because money will give your goodness expression. You will be able to do that. The second thing that you need to know about money is that money is spiritual. That is why I mentioned when I said this 200 rand is not money. This is a symbol of money. Money, the actual money is actually 
something invisible and it is something spiritual it is something that you cannot touch it can be symbolized by a paper it can be symbolized by a, co a coin it can actually be symbolized by a digital number in your bank but that is not money that is a symbol of the money that you have created which is spiritual now when you say money when I say money is spiritual obviously a lot of people are already thinking about religion they're already thinking about religious stuff something spiritual is not always religious you know something spiritual is not always religious you know I know a lot of people when we talk about spiritual stuff you know they th something spiritual is something real but you can't touch it something you can experience but you can't measure it in a lab when you 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 have love you know for someone love is real you can feel love you can experience love but you can't go to a laboratory you know and put love in a measurement and say that you've got 10 degrees of love you know you can't do that why because love is spiritual now when you look at money in its essence in its essence money is spiritual when i say spiritual i mean you know something that is uh, can't be measured you know i will give you an example something spiritual also does not diminish by use you know you know the real money 200 when you take 200 you can use it and it will be finished but if you have real money your money can't finish you know why because it increases it is something that is uh, uh, that can be produced from thin air if i can put it that way if you know how to produce money something that we are going to be discussing in our uh, last you know episode of the money talks you know so i will give you uh, an illustration when you go in the dark when you go in a house that is dark and you have uh, 20 houses that are dark actually our whole area as i am talking you know we haven't had electricity for the past four days now so take for example if one man decided that they were going to light a candle in their home you know and then they put that candle on a post in their home and then i go to them and i say you know what i have a candle but it doesn't have light can i light my candle on your candle and they say not a problem then i light my candle from their candle i can bet and i can tell you that i have not done anything wrong to that man and i have not taken anything from them and i have not diminished their light even by them giving me part of their light to allow me to that is how money is money is something spiritual and your money and my money does not influence each other in the sense that you're having more and me having less has not anything to do with your having more and we are going to look at that you know when when, when you take something spiritual and uh, you use it what is left is not less what is left is spiritual is 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 infinite you know so when you look at money if you're going to look at money as a finite thing you are going to have serious problems because you would want to go and get that which has already been made by someone but when you look at money as something spiritual you will see that your relationship with money will be calm because you will know that there is a possibility of me as well producing and creating my own money which something that uh, we are also going to discuss so you can see that um, uh, God when he is talking about money most of the times he doesn't talk about the physical money he talks about the spiritual side of money and the spiritual side of money is called wealth
So that's the third thing and I'm going to be closing. So we talked about uh, the fact that uh, if you want to have a good relationship with money, you need to have a healthy desire for money. The second thing is that you need to understand money itself. And to understand money itself, you need two things. The first thing is that you need to understand that money is amoral. It doesn't have any morality on its own. You give it morality. When you're a good man, your money is good. When you're terrible, you are an adulterer. You use your money to commit as much adultery as you can. You know, that is money is going to give you expression of what is in your heart. Then we also say that money is spiritual. <clears throat> it is not something that can diminish. You know, the physical money can diminish, but not the actual money. The symbol, the symbol for money can diminish because it has come into the physical realm. You know, but the actual uh, money cannot. Now, the third and last thing is that you need to understand the difference between riches and wealth. So I was just explaining that if you want to have a, a good relationship with money, you also need to understand the difference between wealth and riches. And uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says that, remember, it is I that gives you power to create wealth. Now, in, in a lot of passages of the Bible, when God is talking about uh, uh, wealth, he talks about it in a way that he desires his people to be wealthy than him just talking about riches. Why is it that it's important for you to understand the difference between wealth and riches? You know, if wealth and riches were the same thing, God would not warn us about wealth, about riches. You know? And God, get me very, very clearly today, God is not against riches. He is just against our obsession with riches. He is against the obsession that people have to use riches to do wrong because you can't use wealth to do wrong you know why because wealth is the process that creates riches i will give you an example there are a lot of people that do legitimate business to sponsor illegitimate activities the legitimate business that they are doing is wealth so take for example, if you have a farm, farm you grow food and, and food, food feeds, feeds people, people and you make your millions and, and you, you take, take your, your millions, millions and, and you, you support, support anarchy, you support evil, you, you support, support what, what you are, are doing is that you are using your riches to do wrong, wrong things. things. But, but here what, what you are doing is fine. fine. Are you seeing what I mean? So God, God wants us to why because wealth is the process wealth is that thing that we have you know wealth is the ability that helps us to create riches and most of the times than not wealth is like money it is something that is invisible you know uh, when I am walking around if I am driving, if, if I am wearing a very expensive shoe, people can see the shoe that I am wearing. But it's until they interact, they may not act what get the money that allowed me to buy that shoe. So what a lot of people miss is that they go for the shoe instead of going helped me to create that shoe because if if to buy that shoe because if they then they don't need to take the shoe out of my leg they don't have shoe they don't have to get my shoe what that they need to do get the same shoe so that is why god wants to be wealthy because when we are wealthy 
we will not obsess with riches if you go into the house of a wealthy man and you take everything that they own and when you go back tomorrow you will find that they have everything that you took from them but if you you are just rich and we take away your riches which were, were not, not created by wealth and, and then, then we we'll leave, leave you without it, it i can guarantee you you will never replace your riches so i would rather you go oh. for wealth than going i will give you some examples of wealth a young man realizes that he or she is not very well educated so they spend hours and hours studying either on the internet or studying through a university and then they get knowledge that helps them to go and get a very good job and then they start to earn very very good money what you don't see is the nights the the, the 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 effort and the time that they were creating wealth the wealth they created is that qualification that opens the door to get into a place where they are given a job that gives them the money but you see a lot of people that are not one understand this process they will just see this guy now that drives an od a8 and they want the old a8 but they don't want the process that helped them to create the ability to get that a8 without any problems you know last time in one of the episodes of this talk discussed uh, a rabbi who said that don't get my money get my values what he was simply saying is that if you get my values you will have my money you will have the kind of money that i have so ladies and gentlemen let us just wrap up today our discussion we said your relationship with money depends on these four things you know <coughs> excuse me it depends on your desire to have money it depends on your knowledge that money is amoral it's neither good nor bad and it also depends on your understanding that money and wealth is a spiritual thing it's not physical and that God wealth and these things are invisible and that uh, you need to understand the difference between riches and wealth and i would rather you go for wealth because when you have wealth, you can have riches but it's not everyone that has riches is wealthy so god, god bless you we will see you again in our next episode as we come to finish it up the beliefs that people have about money Thank you so much, Pastor Ken Moale, for such a beautiful, beautiful word that you have prepared for us. It is always good to learn about money in church. Now, we are going to take tithes and offering, and this is the scripture that we are going to read. Luke 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, as we give our tithe and offering remember that it is always good to give there will be our banking details on the screen please do make sure saints that you offer and don't forget that every thursday at six we are having our prayer service right here on facebook may the goodness of the lord go with you wherever you are may his mercy follow you as well as his words say and enjoy the rest of your week in the mighty name of jesus christ